Rabbi Sai, we've done five segments on Nedin Saf, on godliness, on the Nimshal. This is segment six. And there are two ideas that I wish to present here. Neither of which are easy to understand. The first idea is that even though the entire no notion of the Eden Saf is Me'en Hamoir, that it's a perfect copy, likeness of the source, and as we explained in the previous segment, that because of the Bittle it actually carries things from the source that it shouldn't carry, it carries them also. On the other hand, the reality of Oyer, godliness exists because of a process of Timtzum. Timtzum means a containment. Timtzum means some kind of a change, some kind of an affecting of an alteration of the way something is naturally for it to be in a different condition. And um, it's argued in many Maimodim that any concept of Eden Tzav, even the very highest levels of Eden Tzav, only exist because of Tzimtzum. The difficulty that lies in the idea that godliness only exists because of Tzimtzum is that if godliness exists because of Tzimtzum, there's a proactivity. There's a, there's a an action and an actor. In this case, of course, the metamtzim, the one affecting the tzimtzim, which is a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And the problem is, if for any levels of Eden Safe to exist, there needs to be tzimtzim, how is Eden Safe Eden Safe? How is godliness a passive emerger, emerger, from the source with a capital S, if for that process to take place, there has to be an event of tzimtzim to allow that to happen? And I'm not sure what the answer to that question is. But nevertheless, both of these things are true. On the one hand, as we discussed in the previous segment, the whole phenomenon of Eden Saf is Me'ein Hamoir. And you don't want to say Ratzin, you want to say that it's you don't want to say that it's created, you want to say that it's allowed to be, so that it should have the notion of being a passive emer emergent from the source. And at the same time, the process that allows oil to exist altogether is symptom. That's the first idea that I wish to explore. And the second idea I wish to explore is that there's many levels in Eden Saf. There's many levels in godliness. And the many levels in Eden Saf, the many levels in godliness, basically go into two groupings. And of course, basically is a big bad word. Um, because real learning is not about basically, it's about precisely. But... Before you get to the precise, you do the basic first. And the two basic dimensions of godliness, of Edein Saf, that we talk about, and both, both of them exist because of a series of processes of Tzimtzum, are Edein Saf that exists because of Shleimus Ha'atzmus, and Edein Saf that exists because of the worlds. In other words, levels of godliness, whatever they may be, that are part of the wholeness of God Almighty, which would make them kdumim, as long as God exists, they exist, and if God exists forever, they exist forever as well. And then levels of godliness that are mechudashim. You don't want to call them creations, but their original emanations in conjunction with the fact that there is a world. These are two ideas, and I want to talk about both of them. Number one, the idea that all levels of Eden Tzav emerge because there's a Timtum from what's before to what's after. Notwithstanding all the ideas that we say about Me'ein Hamoir. And number two, that there is a basic division between higher ideas that didn't save and lower ideas that didn't save, where the higher ideas of didn't save exist not because of anything associated with worldliness, but because of Shleimus Atmos, the perfection and wholeness of God Almighty. To say it in a sentence that the Shleimus of Atmos, the perfection and wholeness of God Almighty, includes the idea of uh, Bilti Metzias Nimtza, and he includes also Shleimus Metzias. And accordingly, there's levels of Eden Tzav that are associated with God and not worldliness. And then there are levels of godliness whose entire reality is because of their ultimate relationship with worldliness. 
So we have to talk about each one separately. Let's talk about the first one first and the second one second. The first is the notion that there is a series of tzimtzumim that allow for godliness to exist altogether. And uh, although I'm not in the habit of doing this, I will do this now. I'm going to reference two sources from my modem that discuss to some extent the phenomena of these tzimtzumim, certainly on the highest levels. The first is the Maimer Kotenti from the Rebbe Rashab in Tafere Shayin Ches. In Sefer HaMaimodem Tafresh Shayin Ches, there are two Kotaintis. This is the second Kotainti. It begins on page Tzadik Tes. The Rebbe, our Rebbe, quote Chazer this Maimer in Tafshin Yud Zayin. That's, I guess, 38 years later. 37, 39 years later, 1956 to 57, the Rebbe reviewed this Maimer. And it's in the safe Maimodem Tafshin Yud Zayin. And it begins on page Samach Beis. And the second Maimed that I want to reference that talks about Simtsum is the Maimed Basil Legani from Tafshin Memhe from 1985 from Howard Rebbe. And there's several Maimodem that follow it, where the Rebbe also introduces the idea of Simtsum and before the Simtsum Harishin to explain that any kind of form, including the form that has to do with the Lakus, with the Insaif, with godliness, happens because of Simtsum. And again, let's repeat that the underlying issue is always going to remain. How can we appreciate the me'en amoyer quality of air, the bederech me'ela quality of air, the ha'ara quality of air, the idea that the source, the light emerges from the source passively, and therefore there's none of the source in the light, and the notion that in order for light to exist altogether, there has to be a tzimtzum. And again, I don't know how to resolve it, but nevertheless, both of these ideas are true. The beginning of this conversation requir requires us to discuss something that some would call common sense, basic, obvious. And even if it's commonsensical and even if it's obvious, it is incredibly profound. But um, others would argue that it's not so simple, that it's, it's, a, it's a contended issue. Nishta zei poshit, as they say in Yiddish. This is an idea that appears in the Rebbe's Torah a lot. To give you one source for this, the Sikha that the Rebbe spoke in Pasha Vayeti Tavshin Memches about the Sefer Derech Amuna, which is Charles Chubas in Kabbalah for the Remeir Ben Gabay, the Mechab, the Sefer Avedis HaKoyder, where the Rebbe presented this idea and he also edited that Sikha. And the idea is that we learn Torah. We learn Torah means we learn things that can be understood. You cannot learn things which are by definition outside of the realms of logic. One of the basic, really one of the basic, one of the core beliefs and teachings of Primus Torah of Kabbalah and Hasidus is the phenomenon of Nimna Hanim Nois. Nimna Hanim Nois in plain words means that God is not bound by the laws of logic. He's the creator of the laws of logic. And in as much as he's not bound by the laws of logic, you cannot ask why and you cannot answer because. Because there's no rules. You can't understand it. However, when Hashem created the world, he created the world within the parameters of logic. Or to say it more precisely, is tackled by Raiso, but Almo God Almighty created the Torah. The Torah is the blueprint of the creation, and then he proceeded to create the creation, the blueprint of the Torah. And when it comes to the Torah, the Gemara says, very importantly, Torah he will means if it's Torah, it can be understood. If it's Torah, it's Chachmas Hashem Baruch It's logic. So when we study, when we talk about Hashem, talk about God. If we talked about it in free fall philosophy, it's a very, very random, arbitrary exploration. You'd have to be incredibly intelligent. You have to be incredibly dedicated to the truth, and you'd also have to be incredibly lucky that your ideas should be consistent with the truth. It's, it's very unlikely that a person should use his own mind to explore a, such deep and abstract and lofty ideas as in Eid Mavade and come to conclusions that are accurate, that are precise, that are true. So we, when we learn, we, we study Torah. 
Shmaisa Hashem Elokin Hashem Echad is a pasuk in Chumash. Ani Adai Hashem Lo Yishanisi is a pasuk in Chumash. Ein Eid Ein Mivadi a pasuk in Chumash. We're not just exploring God using our own common sense, our own intellect. We're exploring God as the biblical passages, and then to some extent the Chazal present us with clues about how we should understand Hashem. And there's two components to this containment. Two components to this. Uh, pr- uh, narrowness of only learning it in the Torah. Number one, it's true because it's Torah. And number two, it's logical because it's Torah. When we talk about Hashem and the creation, we have to remember that Hashem is not logical. Hashem's Torah is logical. In other words, the way that creation is described within the parameters of the Torah can be understood because the rule is that Torah is called Chachma. And again, to repeat the quote from the Gemara, Torah is meant to be learned. It can be learned and it must be learned. So when we encounter a question like the one we're facing now, how do we reconcile the idea that Alakus emerges from the Moir in a way of Memele and Pshitos and Ha'ara and all the rest and the idea of Tzimtzum? understand that the simple answer to that question could be a nimnanim noise. We can't understand because it's not logical. It, it's a, it would be a correct answer. It wouldn't be a helpful answer, but it would be a correct answer. But we don't do that because the Maimonim insists, Kabbalah insists, Hasidus insists that these, step, these levels of Eirin Seif emerge through a series of Tzimtzumim. And that's the story of this Maimir of Basi Lagani Tafshin Memhei, where the Rebbe began to explore the Tzimtzum before the Tzimtzum Arishin. What the Rebbe was arguing is that although we know that there's a certain point at which we say we can't learn anymore because this is where the Abishta is creating the world within the parameters of Teda. In other words, the Abishta creating the world within the parameters of logic, logic stops. Higher than that, there's no questions because there's no answers. But. The Rebbe teaches us, Hasidus teaches us, that Torah, in other words, Seichel, reaches incredibly, incredibly high in the highest Madregis of the Neat the highest levels pre Tzimtzum, and accordingly, we can understand it and we must understand it. And this conversation that we're going to be having about the idea of Tzimtzumim to permit in itself to exist on a variety of different levels. Although we're not going to be able to understand the duality, how on the one hand the Tzimtzumim exists, on the other hand the Eidus Memele. But the point is, the foundation of the conversation is a Torah says these Tzimtzumim exist. It's not just common sense, not just you and I decided that they have to exist. Torah heave a little bit of When Torah says what the Rebbe said in that Maimed, that there's Tzimtzumim between Atmos and Yecheles, and between the Eibishter and what we're calling Atmos, whatever the particulars that the Rebbe discussed, when the Rebbe says these things, he's not just telling you his opinion, he's telling you the Emes of Torah. And if he's telling you the Emes of Torah, it's true. That even on these levels, we can apply the laws of logic and attempt to understand the processes of the Tzimtzum that allow Elokus to exist. And we'll continue this in the next segment. And all I did here was essentially introduce the idea that for Aiden Safe to exist, there has to be an Ibi Tzimtzumim. In the next segment, we'll talk a little bit about this. Thank you.